In this video, I'll be showing the process of stage biting an aquatint. I'll be etching a copper plate to create a full value image. Here we see the value stages that we'll be using to make the image. This example plate has been submerged in the acid three times, once for two minutes, once for four minutes, and once for eight minutes, meaning that the total time it's been in the acid is 14 minutes, and this achieves a nice rich black. To prepare the copper plate, we cut it to size, file the edges, polish the surface, and then degrease the surface. The rosin box contains a fine rosin powder. I start by agitating or stirring up the fine dust particles in the box. Then the degreased copper plate is carefully placed inside of the box so that the rosin dust can settle onto it. This usually takes about five minutes. If we look straight down at the plate surface, it still appears copper colored, but when we sight it from a low angle, it appears brown or rosin colored. We can slide the plate to the side to compare the rosin buildup to the white background of the backing board. The rosin is then melted onto the plate surface with a propane torch. You can see the color change as the rosin is sealed onto the surface. The rosin will act as a resist to the acid, creating value tones much as a halftone screen would. Here you can see the fine grit of the rosin on the copper plate. This texture creates a wonderful drawing surface. The image I will be drawing is a scene from The Godfather by Mario Puzo. It depicts the famous moment in a restaurant where Michael Corleone, having retrieved a handgun from a restroom, kills mob boss Virgil Salazzo and police captain Mark McCluskey. I begin by drawing compositional value studies. Then, when happy with one, I scale the image to size and transfer the outline to the plate surface. The manner of drawing an aquatint etching can seem confusing at first, but becomes intuitive with practice. Not only must your design be drawn in the mirror image so that it'll print in the proper orientation, but it's also drawn in the negative. So we have to flip the image before transferring an outline to the plate. The drawing materials are applied on top of the rosin and can be anything that is waterproof and resists acid. I will use lithography crayons, Sharpie paint pens, and a tar-like black substance called asphaltum. Stage one. This is the way the plate appears when it goes in the acid for the first time. The pink areas are totally blocked by Sharpie paint pen and will remain white in the final image. The areas that appear black are partially protected from the acid, depending on the amount of coverage. Stage two. I continue drawing, increasing the buildup of acid-resistant materials. On this stage, I have used a blue Sharpie paint pen. The color changes of the pen won't affect the plate differently, but they do help me to keep track of each stage. Stage three. Again, at this stage, I keep drawing shaded areas, but now I'm using the black asphaltum for a total stop out, and this time a red Sharpie paint pen. The only areas still getting dark are where you can see the copper. We're now in the dark gray stage of the stage biting. Stage four. Finally, using more crayon, asphaltum, and this time a green paint pen, this will be the last time in the acid. Where you still see copper, the image will be black. Here I am taking the plate out of the acid after the final stage bite. The total time in the ferric chloride was about 30 minutes, with each bite being longer than the previous one. Again, you can see the different colors indicating the different stages of biting. The plate is thoroughly rinsed with water to clean off the acid. 
Next, I will take the copper plate over to my inking area and clean off the drawing materials and rosin to see what I've created. I am using mineral spirits to take off the crayons and asphaltum, and then denatured alcohol to clean off the Sharpie paint pens and the rosin. So I will have to go back and forth with the solvents until all I see is the clean copper plate now holding the image I've created. This can be a rather magical moment in the creative process for as much as I can plan and anticipate the final image, and no matter how many etchings I have made, each plate will always hold surprises. To see the final result all at once, after days, weeks, and sometimes even months of work, feels like it's coming from some other power or place. Not to overstate it, but this can feel like a very spiritual moment. And while you can see the image embedded in the plate, the proof is in the printing. To print an etching or aquatint, you begin by pushing etching ink down into the grooves where the acid has eaten away the copper. I apply the ink with a chip of cardboard, carefully filling the grooves without scratching the plate surface. Next, I will begin gradually wiping the excess ink off the surface with a balled up tarlatan fabric. The open mesh of this fabric allows it to pick up and hold the excess ink. I will massage the plate with a dirty tarlatan, which has been used many times before, and then switch to a cleaner tarlatan. At this time, I can really see the richness of the drawing and my image in the positive for the very first time. This is exciting, having drawn in the negative and through stages, and now to see a realistic image which resulted from a rather abstract approach. A sheet of paper from a phone book is used for a final surface wipe to brighten up the lightest areas. A soft rag is then used to wipe clean the beveled edge of the plate. Now ready for printing, the inked plate is transferred over to the etching press. A sheet of paper which has been soaking in water is blotted and carefully positioned on top of the inked plate. Three blankets are then positioned on top of the paper. These blankets will help to soften and distribute the tons of downward pressure from the press's upper roller so that the dampened paper will be pushed down into the plate and pick up every bit of ink. When the blankets are pulled back, you can see the embossment made by the beveled edge of the copper plate. This embossing is a telltale sign that differentiates an etching or intaglio print from other printing techniques. And then we get to see the printed image. My goal is to have it fully resolved on first printing, but the plate can be reworked either to lighten or darken an area as needed. Etchings have a unique look, an appearance that I have always personally responded to. Whether it's a Rembrandt or a Goya or a Martin Lewis etching, they always stand out to me. Etching is a unique drawing method. The process of stage biting builds a richness and depth that is distinctive. And while learning the process can take time and effort, the etching plate can be printed up to a hundred times without deteriorating. Each print represents a separate inking, a separate wiping and a separate running through the press, and each resulting print is considered an original work of art.